Hundreds of millions of years ago, Earth was almost unrecognizable. All the land masses were joined together in one massive supercontinent, brimming with creatures both stunning and terrifying. When you imagine prehistoric Earth, you might see a T-Rex tearing through dense foliage with its fearsome jaws. But even before dinosaurs reigned, enormous beasts already dominated the landscape. Welcome to the Permian period. This chapter of Earth's story began around 300 million years ago. At that time, the world had a single colossal continent, Pangaea, encircled by a vast global sea known as Panthalassa. The Permian started just after an ice age, with much cooler conditions than what we're used to today. But during the early stages of this period, global temperatures climbed, transforming the planet into a green and vibrant world filled with a wide variety of life. As always, Earth was in motion. Over the course of 50 million years, the climate continued heating up and drying out. Eventually, the planet faced the most lethal event in its history, wiping out nearly every form of life. This apocalyptic moment is called the Great Dying. It stands as the deadliest extinction event Earth has ever endured. And that's saying a lot, considering there have been five major ones. But before we descend into catastrophe, let's go back to explore a wild and wondrous era. Step into the Permian period, a time when some of the most bizarre and extraordinary creatures began to evolve. If you could hop into a time machine and travel 300 million years into the past, you'd arrive right in the middle of Pangaea. This supercontinent had just been assembled, the result of ancient landmasses colliding together, forming a vast territory that covered roughly a third of the planet. The atmosphere back then had noticeably less oxygen than we're used to now, but you might still be able to breathe, barely, and pack something warm. Temperatures in many areas hovered around 4 degrees, 39 degrees, but that cold wouldn't last. By the end of the early Permian, the ice had mostly melted, and Earth was turning into a thriving green paradise. This was a world shaped by volcanic fury. Explosive eruptions carved out new land, influenced the weather, and drove the course of evolution itself. As the giant swamp forests began to wither and dry, plants had to find new strategies to survive. Around 290 million years ago, the first seed-bearing plants appeared, called gymnosperms. These ancient evergreens grew cones filled with seeds and quickly spread across Pangaea. These forests, though ancient, had something oddly familiar. Cicadas and beetles were already buzzing around, feeding on plant sap. And the real surprise? Giant cockroaches. Not the pests we swat today. These were massive, some as large as birds. Thankfully, they never dominated the land but something else far more intriguing did. Meet Demetrodon, the distant ancestor of mammals. This predator looked like a reptilian menace and measured around five meters, 16 feet long, weighing up to 225 kilowatts, 500 pounds. A massive sail stretched along its back, which likely helped it manage body heat, soaking up sunlight during the day and releasing warmth at night. Picture it stalking like a crocodile ready to ambush with a deadly bite. Demetrodon had a unique mix of sharp and blunt teeth, perfect for slicing and crushing its prey. A true apex predator of its era, as the Permian marched on, other mammal-like reptiles came into the spotlight. Therapsids. These creatures had powerful jaws and teeth, and a more upright posture than their reptilian cousins, with legs positioned under their bodies. They ranged from large omnivores like Deuterosaurus, up to five meters, 16 feet long, to the much smaller Lycanops, a carnivore roughly one-fifth that size. If you hung around for another 20 million years, you'd encounter even more therapsid species spreading across the planet. Meanwhile, the planet continued to warm. During the Middle Permian, the average temperature on Pangaea hit around 25 degrees, 77 degrees sats. Volcanoes erupted frequently, releasing massive amounts of greenhouse gases into the air. This warming shifted sea levels, but the oceans remained bustling with life. Dive into Panthalassa, and you'd swim among early sharks and bony fish, primitive, but successful in their ancient world. As the environment changed, many marine creatures evolved quickly, while others vanished just as fast. By the late Permian, another reptilian oddball arrived, Lystrosaurus. About the size of a medium dog, this herbivore had a body like a pig and a lizard's skin. It grew to about one meter three feet long and used its strong forelimbs to dig burrows for shelter. But Lystrosaurus wasn't alone. Soon, another curious creature showed up, the Cynodont. These small mammal-like reptiles were about one meter long and resembled oversized rodents, complete with whiskers. Cynodonts hunted insects and small animals and are considered early relatives of true mammals. 
but something ominous was building. Increased volcanic eruptions began pushing more carbon dioxide into the air, while oxygen levels dropped dramatically. Some scientists believe the atmosphere may have contained as little as 10% oxygen, less than half of today's 21%. Breathing in that world would have been extremely difficult, and the temperature kept climbing. By the end of the Permian, Earth's average temperature had risen to about 28 degrees, 84 degrees, creating a harsh, overheated environment. Then everything fell apart. Roughly 252 million years ago, disaster struck. A massive extinction wiped out nearly all life. About 90% of all species vanished in what we now call the Great Dying. To this day, it remains the most catastrophic mass extinction Earth has ever experienced. The exact cause, still debated, but most scientists agree it involved immense volcanic activity. These eruptions released so much ash that sunlight was blocked out almost completely. The planet darkened, photosynthesis halted, plants died en masse, and as plant life disappeared, herbivores starved. Carnivores followed soon after, but that was only the beginning. After the skies cleared, the lingering carbon dioxide caused a dramatic rebound in global temperatures, higher than before. The ocean, already suffering, lost most of its oxygen. Marine creatures, unable to breathe, suffocated. Over 95% of ocean life and more than 70% of land species were lost forever. 